for the sicha. First sicha in Parsha Shlach, Chelik Yitches, look at the sicha. So before we start the sicha inside, I just want to mention the Agdome to the Rasha that we're going to learn, that in the end of Parsha Baalaischa, the Torah tells us the story of Miriam, that Miriam spoke against Meish Rabbeinu. It wasn't really against Meish Rabbeinu, but Miriam heard that Meish, found out that Meish Rabbeinu separated from his wife. So she mentioned it and she and Anna spoke about it, obviously not meaning anything bad, but he spoke that Nebuchadnezzar's pity on his wife. So Debeshter was upset. He spoke against Meish and then Debeshter made her into a Betzeda. She got leprosy and then she had to be locked up for seven days. And the only Nos, the Pesach says that as long as she was locked up, no one traveled. But Achar, after she got locked, locked up and she was finished with the seven days, Nos, the people traveled from Chatzeres. They were in the area called Chatzeres. And they traveled after that happened, they traveled by Yachnum and Midbarporon, and they rested in Midbarporon. Then comes the Parsha Shlach right after that. And it says, Vedavar Hashem Meshe Leimer, Hashem spoke to Meshe, said, Shlach Ocha Anoshim, send people to spy, so to speak, at Yisrael. And where did they go from? Since they rested in Chatzeres, so the Pesach says, from Chatzeres, he sent them from Chatzeres to go to Eretz Yisrael. So, Rashi, the first Rashi in the Parsha, will read the Sikh inside, and then we'll bring the Rashi. In Ascholos HaSedr, Shteltech Rashi, Bivet Teshlach Lecha Anoshim, in the beginning of the Parsha, Rashi quotes the words from the Pesach, where it says, Shlach Lecha Anoshim, sent people to spy Eretz Knaan, Eretz Yisrael, and it's Mefarish, and this is what Rasha says. After he quotes the words, which are also exact, every word that Rasha quotes in the Dibur Amaschal, in the, the quote of the Chumash, he only quotes those words which are negated to the Pshat. So he quotes the three words, Shlach Lecha Anoshim, and it's Mefarish, Rasha says like this. Loma Nismacha Parshas Meraglim, the Parshas Miriam. Why is Parsha of Meraglim written very close, right after the Parsha of Miriam? And the answer is, the Tisha Loksal Iske Dibo, Shedibar Bachel, since she was punished. For the talking, she was involved in talking, what she said. She she spoke against her for about her brother. So she was punished for it. So what does that show? That for Lashon Hara, you get punished, which means you have to not speak Lashon Hara. These Rishoyim, these Meraglim, who the Rashi refers to them as Rishoyim, they saw this, all they even saw this, so they saw this, and they didn't take Musa from this. They didn't take a lesson. So that's what the Pesach says, to show how bad they were that even though they saw what happened to Miriam in connection to what she spoke, nevertheless, they didn't care, they didn't take a lesson, and they also spoke bad against Eretz Yisrael. So we have to understand like this. The come upon me, he says, I spoke many times. As from them was snoring itself to Eretz Yisrael, and Rashi, and Tam, and Tzvich, and Parshas. Since we find an interesting thing, only in a few places in Chumash does Rashi explain the connection between one Parsha and the other. Every Parsha you could explain. What the connection between this parsha and that parsha? Rashi doesn't do that. Only seldom, few places. Is mucha from that we prove as a derech of pshat, derech Rashi with pirush al atzeira. According to the derech of Rashi, which is the derech of shutei shemika, the simple pshat, is can kasha nitov for what's in the dafke deep parsha is mucha. There is no kasha in pshat. We don't look into see why one parsha, one inyan is connected, to, is close to the other. Alach kama vekama when the parsha is coming, I'll say that as manim, especially. If the Seder of the Parsha, the order of the Parsha, is fits exactly to the time, to the way it was. In other words, in this case, the story of the Maragam actually happened right after the story of Miriam. So certainly there is no Kasha. But how there is no Kasha in Pshutosh Mika, why one Parsha comes close to the other? Certainly if it goes, Poshet al Pizman, that this comes, that this happened right after the previous Parsha. He's not moving, but he's not eating the down, he's not pregnant. So in our case, it's not understood, he's not eating since the sending of the Maragum actually happened right after the story of Miriam, if Morgan knows the Shiva Sameh has given Miriam on the day after the seven days period of her being locked up was finished, so then right away happened this. So why are you asking Lom and Ismachok? It's not a cash. Certainly when it happened right after, that's why it's closed because. Right after the story of Miriam, this happened. That's one kasha of Chlovos. Eizach mifashtein kama diyukim in Loshan Rasha. We also have to understand certain questions in the Loshan of Rasha. The other one was not a kasha on the Loshan, it was a kasha on the Teichen. 
at the contents of what the Asha said. Here's on the Loshan. Number my hand. The Rebbe says, amongst those, the Rebbe is not even asking quite a few questions, but there are even more. Number one, the Asha uses the Loshan of Ishilokso al Iske Diba because they saw that Miriam was punished al Iske Diba. Iske Diba means getting involved in speaking. Rasha Kitab Zog, now Loshan Hore. Rasha is very simple. She got punished for Loshan Hore. We are always of the Pasha Shmeis, Shalok Samiriam Al Loshan Hore. In Pasha Shmeis, Rasha mentions it that she was punished for Loshan Hore. So why doesn't Rasha say very clear? She was punished for Loshan Hore. Rasha says it's a strange law. She's punished because she was involved in speaking. The Kasha is not starker. This Kasha is stronger. In Avaita, the composite types of Rasha of the word Debo, in a later Posik, Rasha says that the word Debo, what does it mean? So Rasha says like this, call Hitzoa's Dibo. Any type of talk you talk, it could be called Dibo. Loshen Chinuch Dvorim is the way you speak. The Yeshna Lateva, the Yeshna Lero. The word Dibo doesn't necessarily mean bad. Dibo means talking. Sometimes the word Dibo goes on good things. Haith Vozok, Rasha Shlok Sa'at Iske Dibo. So why does Rasha, when he wants to say that she was punished for Loshen Horer, Rasha says she was punished because she was involved in Dibo. In Dibo is Nikmuch Chachet. Saying she was involved in Diba, Diba doesn't show this wrong, it's an Aveda. Other rabbis can, because I'm telling it could be something you could throw good. So certainly Rasha should have written very clear that she was punished for Loshon Hore, which we know clearly what the Chet is, what Aveda is. Rasha says, so Iske Diba, which doesn't even say what it was, that it was bad. Second Kasha, why did Rasha add that she spoke this Diba, which was the Loshon Hore, on her brother? And the main thing that Rasha is trying to say, she was punished for what she spoke. The Maragdom should have taken a lesson, and they didn't. What difference on who she spoke? The main thing is, Rasha should have said she spoke, Dibo, they saw it. They should have taken a lesson to be careful what they say, and they didn't. A third Kasha, Gimel. Why does Rasha write, these Rishoyim saw this, and they did not take a lesson? Rasha so, we know we're talking about these guys, the Maraglim. Why does Rasha have to say, Rishoyim Alo, the call of Rishoyim, what's the game here to call? Should have said, they, they didn't take a lesson. Fourth Kasha, Hadiyuk, Rovali Lok Hamusa, it's a strange lotion. They saw and they didn't take a lesson. Unit, they should have, Rasha should have said, Rov Musa, Valay Shabra, they saw a lesson and they didn't keep it. A different place in Chumash, in Dvarim, Rasha Taka ben this Indian says the same thing, but Rasha uses the lotion. They saw something of a lesson and they didn't take it. But here he says they saw what she did and they didn't take a lesson. It's a strange lotion. Hey, the fifth Kasha. The whole Rasha is trying to explain Shlach. She was Shlach means this was the sending of the Maragli. Why does he have to also quote Shlach, the two words Lachon Anoshim? Why does he have to also quote Shlach, the two words Lachon Anoshim? So given the looks of my things, I never watched Shlach. It would have been enough if it was just written Shlach. Al derech in omen parshas v'aleis. For instance, example, the beginning of parshas v'aleis. But Rashi is eich mafarish smichas parshas. Rashi there also explains the smichas there why the parsha v'aleis of the menayr is written right after the end of the one before. Rashi is a love and this mechav parshas hamenayr of parshas hamenayim. Why is the parsha the menayr right after the menayim? Rashi explains why. So what does Rashi do? In shtelzich on his might ignore the word v'aleis. He writes the word Baaleischa, which we know this is the parsha that we're talking about, and he writes, what's the connection, what's the smichas between Baaleischa, which is the parsha of and the Nisim, etc., etc. He doesn't quote Baaleischa as Hanayres, and you will light the Manayra. Why here? As he says, Shlach Lecha Anosh, should have said the first word, which we know what we're talking about, we're talking about the Meraglim, Shlach, send, send the people. Why does Rashi have to write the word Anosh? So the Rebbe answers like this, that's the Fashtek Act in the Kesha for Ramban. To answer that, we'll have to first bring the Kasha of the Ramban, as the Rebbe says in the order eight. But Hura, how do we bring in other Mephoshim when we're trying to explain Rashi, Pshutu Shlomikra, and other Mephoshim are not Pshutu Shlomikra? But this question that the Ramban asks happens to be a Kasha, which is a very simple Kasha, even in simple Pshat of the Posik. So we could quote it from the Ramban, but really it's a Kasha that is al when you learn Pshutu Shlomikra. What's terrible about the sin of the Maraglim? What did they do so wrong? They are shlichas that don't give them to his gifin as far as ahive, some ayesh of Allah, chazaku, mahorim. They were sent special for this. Meshra bin told them what he sent them. What am I sending you for? Find out what is the land like, what kind of people are there, is it strong, what kind of cities are there. Is mafishim amachatosim. So what's their avere? This is the lotion of the Ramban. Was they them till the memes? 
the came and told the truth because they haven't given what they saw. What did they say? At Azhar, the people are strong. You asked me to tell you how the people are strong. But in Bitsuri, they call it the city like surrounded with walls. They just answer what they saw, and that's what they were told to do. Again, if for answer they had is Bashan in the Zog Nera Sahelis Ishvel, the Huda, you could answer it like this. They didn't just give a report of what they saw. They also said a certain a certain uh, evaluation, so to speak. They said that this is a land that eats up its inhabitants, that people, a lot of people die. That they shouldn't have said. Because that they wouldn't ask to say. You're giving your, your opinion about what type of land it is. Just say what you saw. Or did they amaze design to them as they am gazan they hamaskon? And maybe the problem is that they, besides giving over what they saw, they also added a, a, an, an end saying. As lay no halalis, we won't be able to go up. They said, no one asked them for their opinion. That if, if you're going to be able to go up, just say what you saw. And they said, they're strong. They're stronger than us, stronger than the Abishter. But that can't be an answer. What their avera was. But the Ramban, so the Ramban himself says, before they said these things, these extra things, but the shame kolav araingemish kolav mixed in umayas kolav isom, and he made them all quiet. His movement, and in other words, he felt that what the Maragon said, without even saying that we can't go up, they just gave over the, the report. Right away, Kolov said, remember, it's no problem, as if in what they said before was already the problem. His movement for them as the Friedrich that shows that what they said before, that you can't go up, etc. Just by saying, FSK as home, saying the nation is strong, the Orium and the cities are strong, the boy already was no good. That's why Kolov started. Telling them, telling the Eden, don't worry about what they said. So you can't answer the reason is because they said what they said later, because this itself it seems to be a problem. But eight also, I feel as they expected the Gerei Maskona Le Nuchalalis, even what they said later, that they came to a Maskona, they came to a decision that we will not be able to go. You could say it's not a sin. It's wrong what they said, but sometimes you say something wrong, and I could find a, an excuse why you did that wrong thing. Then it's not a chet. Why could I say that? So I'm not going they didn't say we will not go, which is against what Hashem said. Nor He said we cannot go. That could be a description in the situation. By their evaluating the strength of the people in that stroll, and on the other hand, what power the Eden had. They just said, we can't do it. In other words, naturally, we won't be able to do it. They didn't say we won't. In other words, maybe through miracles we could do it. But they were asked that. Even if what they said, is they're stronger than him, meaning, even he said, that even Hashem, so to speak, can't fight them. It doesn't mean in Derech Hapshat that they first denied in, in the Abish, they didn't believe in the strength of the Abish. All they said was, not as the Umez and as they feel starker from the Eden, that we saw that the nations are much, so much stronger than the Eden, as Mikenzer Gonit Forstel and the Azemi Vezikel and Einke and Afilu Technisi. We can't imagine even how miracles could work. Not that it won't work. They said, we know it won't work. We can't imagine how it could work. We can't imagine how the Abisha is going to do it. That's an expression we do a lot of times. So uh, even a miracle won't work. But the far is Kolev Steine and Forgiven. That's why when Kolev answered, didn't say nit as meken einem in Eretz Yisrael apidet apitev. Kovle didn't come and say no, they're not so strong, and we could manage. He didn't say that. Unit nor as Rebish to vebay kum do mas umas uchnisim stam. He didn't even say that you know what, but don't worry, there will be miracles. Nor all in Ayla. They said they didn't come to answer and say that miracles won't work. The Maraglin looks like said that we can't see how even miracles could work. So they didn't come and say yeah, miracles will work. All they said was. We will go up, and Rashi says they meant Afila Bashamayi will go up even to heaven. What Ebushir says, even he tells us, take ladders and go to Shemayim, which means what? Not that a regular miracle could work. I didn't say that. That's what they said. We have to listen to Hashem and don't make Cheshbainis. Even if it needs, Something that never happened yet. Not even a miracle like that happened. We still have to do it. That's what they said. So they didn't come to say against it. So Mamela, what's possible? That when they said we can't fight them, and even the Ebishter with Nisim can't do it, didn't mean that they're denying the Ebishter 
and the Sanchet. They had to describe the situation the way they were asked to. And in their mind, they felt that they're so strong, that a we can do it, even normal miracles can do it. But we still might go. They didn't say no. And since the purpose of them being sent was to find out how strong the people are, under them, can great in some Muhammadis, why do they have to know how strong they are? Because we should be ready even up in Derech Hateve. That's what it wanted to say. They knew that Abishah could do miracles. So what's the gate to know if they're strong or not? To know which cities they should start. The Rabban even talks about it, how they could go, because they were trying to see what they could do in Derech Hateve. And now Piteve is the upshot of the miracle in Nuchal Alas Gyanemis. Piteve, naturally, when they came to their evaluation that we can to do it, it's true. In natural, it can do it. And they had to give their report, an honest report. That's what they did. What's the big fuss over there? Aveire. It was some the eich. The meat was the eich. What's so terrible? Even if you're going to say that the bad part was that they came to a decision that we can't go. That's part of their evaluation. That the evaluation is we saw that they are very strong and we can't go. Now, will we go? Maybe they didn't say we won't go. Maybe we'll go and rely on Hashem. So that's a major dikakasha that we have in the whole story of the Maraglin. This is a kasha that Rasha wants to answer by what he says in the first Rasha that they saw what happened to Miriam and they didn't take a lesson. By putting the two parshas together, that gives us to understand what the par- problem was with the Maraglim, what we did. And the question was, what, why does Rasha ask such a question? He's made not, the question is not really the question the way he asks it. That's only an introduction to say something which will really answer another question. They're beer and they've explained it like this. Those was the Rasha Frek Loman Ismacho. What Rasha says, asks the Kasha, why is the Parsha of Maraglim written right close to the Parsha of Miriam? And the, question, the problem with this question is, the story of the Maragam happened right after the story of Miriam. So what's Rashi's Kasha we asked before? So the Rebbe says like this. Sometimes, when it comes to two parshas, even though they might happen, have a, a, they were in time, they were close. There is a reason why the fetish to separate between them. There's a reason. Even in the case where, if you go according to the timeline, they should be one after another, there is a reason that the Torah should have separated. And we find that before, there's the Parsha Vahibin Sehorin. So, really, it, it doesn't belong there, Rasha says. Why was it written where it is? Before that talks about Eden being punished, after that about Eden being punished. And the Torah wants to make a separation between them, not to go to punishment after punishment. So we see here that sometimes the Torah puts in something in between which it doesn't belong there to Mafsik. So so here also there is a reason why the Torah should be that cannot have written the Parsha Maraglim close to the Parsha of Miriam, even though in time it came right after another for a different reason. Why? The Shas will learn the three parshas, parshas Miriam, parshas Maragim. One will learn these two parshas: the story of Miriam, the parsha Maragim. Ain't another three. They run one right after another, as it's written. If you learn it like that, when the Beit Eretzich and Ganinim from Lashon Hara, and they're both talking about speaking Lashon Hara, Miriam speaking Lashon Hara, and the Maragim speaking Lashon Hara. Came and heard my Gevaldik and told us someone can make a major mistake. Many of us Miriam and the Maragim are in the Zelber Darke. They would think that if they go together and they see here Lashin Lashon Hara, so they're both in the same level. Chas v'Sholom. Or at least similar. In other words, not only somoch close in the way it's written, close in Madrege. That Miriam was also pretty bad. That's what it seems like. So therefore, the Teda should bedafke have not written close to another. Even though everyone knows the story, knows right away that they're not the same. You see the result. See what happened. But Miriam... And she was punished, she was put in, she was in, in lockdown for seven days. What happened is, no, the, the, the nation did not travel. They were supposed to travel. But the Ebishter Zea covered Cholok Lamokim. Rasha says, the Torah, the Ebishter gave her covet when she was in being locked in for imprisonment, so to speak, for seven days. 
The Torah, the Abraham gave her covered and no one traveled. That's what happened. That's by Miriam. Mashiach came by the Maragna. What happened is number one, the Maragna by Yemusim of But what was the result there? They died in the plague. A second thing, the Gansa Dorji Pavamidva. The result was that all the Yidin died within the 40 years of the desert. And the third thing, Ibadem is Menechem Yireim by Midbar Aboyim Shana. And the children who did not, were not part of the Aveda, the next generation, had to go in the Midbar for 40 years. So we see the difference. So how would we say that the Torah really should have separated? Because otherwise we would make a mistake and think Miriam and the Maragam are at the same level of Lashon Hara. Here you see right away, you see the, the end result. You can't say they're the same. But no, you could still say Ados is neither far with the Maragam than the Given a Shoyim Chulu. You might say the reason why they were punished so badly, not because they were a Shoyim. Not why Durch Nitzayin Zoya be the Burom, then all the Yidden Nishlo Givon in Mirida Bashem on the Nitzvah Gain Kanet Yisrael. They definitely were not careful what they said. The truth is, they didn't lie. They gave over a report. But they had to be careful how they say it. And they weren't careful. And what did that cause? Not just, no, sometimes you're not careful. So it caused, it made an uproar all the Eden, all the Eden. And all the Eden were stumbled in the fact that they rebelled against Hashem. And they weren't able to go to Israel. You see what they caused? So the reason they were so punished is because they were not careful and they brought about a terrible thing. I shan't give my Miriam unless you're Lashon Hara given place and in your party. When she spoke Lashon Hara, it was a private thing. So it's maybe Bam is the Miraglim and Miriam are equal. Similar at least. The reason she was not punished is she was given cover because it was a private problem. She had, okay, she got punished and that's it. And the Miraglim, they did it in public. They did it in a way they were not careful and it caused a major problem. That's why they got punished. You would think so. And therefore, there is a reason why the Torah should be mafsik in between. And the far is Rasha might take in the Dibra Mask lay the better Bukha Noshim. That's why Rasha, we asked the Kasha, why in the Dibra Mask on the first words of Rasha, he quotes from the Posik, Shlach Lakha Noshim, not only the word Shlach, also Lakha Noshim. Now we know why. But those in the Khmer Machazik de Shori is Litoy, so the Maragma and Glai Al Kaponi Mendok to Miriam. Rasha, by writing the words in the Dibra Mask, is or negate to the Kasha or negate to the Tet. In this case, why does he write it? He, this, this adds more the possibility that Miriam and the Miraglim were the same or at least similar. These words would make the problem, the, 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 the possibility of a mistake and think of it equal even more. Why? What does it mean? So Rasha says, Lecho means Lecho means, David told Meisha, it's up to you for Meisha. So Meisha had a responsibility. So David said, it's up to you. That you have the right decision to make about this major responsible mission. But vice versa, the Yom for Mok the Grace of Milo, since Moshe, who was the one to choose, and he chose these people for such a special, most important mission, shows they have Milo. Or needs to have Milo, not in the meaning of Shlichus Befrad. Milo in this. So when it's so Rashi quotes the word Shlach, which is the general idea of Meraglim, Lecho, which means they said to Moshe, you do it, you choose. Obviously, they were great people. This is the of the Anoshim. The Torah calls them Anoshim men. What's main? The Rasha says, Rasha said, What does it mean? And what do you think? They were not men. Loshin Chshivus shows how important they were. Kshayim Oyer, they were Tzadikim at that time. So Rasha quotes the word, Shlach Lacha Anoshim, showing that the possibility of a person to think that the Meraglim and Miriam are pretty close. Because the Meraglim were also great people. How do we see the great people? Lacha, Meshach, the one decided to send them. And it was Anoshin, Rasha Anoshin means they were great, the Choshevet people. In order to take away this, this, this possibility of thinking that the Meraglim are like Miriam, and to show that, to make it clear that the Meraglim are not in the same level of Miriam, for the Torah, the Chura, get that mafsek zayin tzvishin the two parshas, not another inyan. So the Torah should have separated another inyan, and then separated two. They're not the same. And he be frakt Rashi alom on these mecha parshas Meraglim and parshas Miriam. Rashi asks, why is Meraglim close to Miriam when really it shouldn't have been close? Even though in time it was close, but there should be. A, there's a reason why it shouldn't be. So even though usually Rashi doesn't ask such a question, certainly when the time fits, but in this case it was different. Amen. For Rashi, so therefore Rashi answers that the reason that's written closely, Fishi Loksa Al Diskei Dibo, since she was punished for getting involved in speaking, 
This Rishoyim saw and they didn't take a lesson. What does it mean? It means like this. Tzayra is masking the three parshas. The Tzayra puts the two parshas together. Kadei to that sale noch aninyan and gedel lachetem ragmon to tell us another pra, another detail in how terrible the chet avera the ragmon was. But thus far end for al derech apshat. This will explain in pshat gedel ensham why their punishment was so great. As yom gehat, what is it? Because the Tzayra puts the two together, showing how terrible they were. Because what does it show? As they um gehat erst od bismichus, I get lagging like stem. I will say they just had very close. I can't tell you push it close. You were very close to Miriam's case, so you sh- there is a very close union of taking a lesson for my Miriam for the story of Miriam. Only lot chumusa they didn't take chumusa. So it's not only the Aveda themselves that they did. They sh- there was an opportunity they should have normally taken the lesson because it was right after the story of Miriam. So that's why the Torah writes it very close. And the Rebbe even that it wasn't the, the lesson they should have taken. As sometimes you see something and you think about it and you, you contemplate and you think you come to a decision that teaches you a lesson. This was a lesson that they saw. There is nothing that they had to think about. That you had to think about it. But that's not good enough. They saw it and they should have just taken it to heart, taken it to themselves. They saw it. From them was a my semirium. The fact that they should have taken a lesson from the story of Miriam. It shows like this. When we say they should have taken a lesson, it shows that what Miriam did is similar to what they did, and they should have taken a lesson not to do it. So it must be that what Miriam did has some similarity to what they did. Not that in the Madregi she was the same, but... This was something that would have taught them a lesson because it would have been something very close to their, what they did. So they should have taken a lesson. They should have taken how wrong it was from what, how wrong Miriam's was. If Miriam's was wrong, they should have realized that this is the wrong what they saw. We don't know yet what it is. What is it that, we, that Miriam is close to? But the bottom line was Rashi is trying to tell us that Taylor writes it close to tell you that they were so bad that not only they did something wrong, whatever it was, but they had the opportunity to take the lesson because it was a very obvious lesson, just have to take it to heart, and they didn't. And this was a lesson they could have taken because it was very similar to what they did. And then the Rebbe continues, then he'll explain it. The father is verstanding the Yisof about Goshe for Rasha, Rishoyim, That's why Rasha adds, we asked before, why does he add the words, and these Rishoyim saw it and they didn't take a lesson. Rasha shows, and they saw, we know who we're talking about. Why did Rasha write Again, here that these were to show you the mid of but this is trying to tell us as their vergleichs between the mirrors from the beta parshas is northern the gate and head. The similarity between the two Miriam, Parsha Miriam, and the Maraglim is only concerning the Avera of the gate dimension. The Avera has a similarity, but the people is not stam chait in the chulu. These people are so far away from the level of Miriam, not only they're sinners, not a show him alolo, they're a show him. Hey, Pepetachlis from Miriam. Complete opposite of Miriam was Mot Esh with Smichas Gelent as Kovet Cholok Lamokin. Miriam, which we just learned that the Torah, the Abishter gave the, her Kovet while she was locked up. So she's the Tzadikis. They are the Shoyim. So Rashi is trying to say, the reason I feel Rashi says that the Torah should have separated, we shouldn't make a mistake, they're the same. Right? And why does it say together? Not to say that the Chas Shalom are the same, because they're not the same. But Rashi stressed you should know they're not the same. They're the Shoyim, she's not. The, the, the reason it says together is because they should have learned a lesson from her because the teichon of what was about, the Abeda, had a very a similarity between what she did and what they did. But we don't understand. What was Taka? Her sin. Let's look into it. Now to see if her sin is similar to the sin of the Maraglin, even though she was at stake, but it has a certain similarity. You have to look into what was her sin. What did she do? What we know is she did. She spoke about Meisha, that Meisha separated from his wife. Those was the Yodgiret of Meisha, and Ejase Isha Kushta Shalok Chabat Gir Shadasha says before she spoke on Meisha concerning the woman that he married, and now he divorced her, separated himself from her. That's what she said. That's the per- terrible thing that Miriam said. You know, that's given on Amos. It was true. He, was, he divorced her, which Mele, she had sad. She suffered. She didn't have the husband. So what's wrong with it? So she said the truth. 
I got Miriam that you zucht reden schlecht of Moshe. No, so she didn't mean to say anything bad about him. Rasha says earlier, like Neskavna, like Nusa, she didn't mean to say something in there to insult him or something. So it need nor had nor need nor she had nor need gemacht a rapshatzing for Moshe. The whole problem she had was she didn't evaluate Moshe's greatness. Kichol adorish as much as she should. As is any noch mer from the Moshe was a mimi in the Moshe diber Hashem. She said like this. What was Hashem? Hashem spoke, speaks with me. Hashem speaks to us also, and we don't separate. So but the truth is, she was wrong because Moshe is even higher than just Tam Hashem speaking. She didn't realize that. She thought that Moshe should not have separated from his wife. Is then so the need for Hashem, the godless from Moshe, like Achlis or Kumti Razayinish? Is it pshat that because she didn't realize? The greatness of Moshe to the fullest extent, so she has to punish for that. That's all it was. All it was is she didn't say anything wrong. She had the truth, but she didn't realize how great Moshe was. That got a punishment. Zok Rasha, that's what Rasha says. Exactly, that's it. Adachet is bashtan and nit in dibaro. That's what Rasha doesn't say. She spoke bad. She didn't speak bad. And Havera was not the fact that she spoke bad because she didn't. Not in iske dibar. Rasha, the problem was that she spoke. That's why Rashi writes Diba, and Diba could be good or bad, doesn't matter. It's speaking. The Etzim Zach, was Yotzich Fanumen, Yotzich Eisig, even with Diba, with Reden, by Richard, the Chulu, by Meshe. The problem was, why speak about Meshe? But how do I speak? Why get involved in getting involved speaking about Meshe? Why are you speaking about Meshe? The Shas Miriam had given by Meshe, and I'll give us a verstehen. But she saw something Meshe did that she didn't understand. But she didn't get off Reden, and then didn't have to speak about it. And not be Saskas in involvement. Even though she said the truth. As I said before, she didn't mean anything bad. She didn't mean to say something wrong about him. She still shouldn't have spoken. Talking about Meshe, all things like this will not bring any good. Sometimes it says something, even if you say good things about somebody, in certain situations it could bring, someone will hear it and it says, we'll say something good about him, but someone else will hear this guy. Yeah, it's like a good, but there's something else bad about it. You can never know. Not to talk about others. I she didn't understand Mesha's behavior. In order to understand Mesha's behavior, I think it should have asked him quietly. The problem was why make a fuss over it and talk about it. That was her chet. So now we know what the chet of Miriam was. She didn't say bad things. The speaking itself, she didn't say wrong things. The mere fact that she got involved in speaking about Mesha. Similar to that was the sin of the miracle. So it didn't lie about Eretz Yisrael. The way they spoke, they got involved in the speech. So they spoke so much. Baret means even in a negative way. They spoke about. They could have said, "Of course, yes, they're very strong." You ask them to say if they're strong, yes, they're strong. The cities are strong. The cities are strong. They went and got involved in speaking. Be so upshrek needn't from. So the way they spoke, the way they stressed the fact that they, the report that they gave, that caused the Eden not to want to go. So here it's not what they said, but it's how they said it. Same thing like Miriam. The Teichon of what she said wasn't wrong, but the mere fact that she said it and made a fuss over it, same thing with them. They wondered, how does Hashem tell us about that to throw when the people there are very strong? Should I have said short, you know? This is what's there. That's it. I don't know. We don't understand why, but this is what it is. Or the Pasha Frank by Mesha. Simple. They should ask Mesha himself. The Hisaskos, the Iske Diba, the fact they were involved in speaking. In other words, go into the details. About the strength of the people who live there. And came to a decision, we can't go. Even if they didn't mean that we can't, they meant that it's so, they're so strong that we can't imagine how we could go. But we will go maybe. But they said it in such a way, all that could do the way they spoke about it, that it could bring Eden to the bell. And brother, the Eden said, let's go back to Mitzrayim. Let's get a different leader and go back to Mitzrayim. So that's what it says. So they saw what happened to Miriam. And Miriam said the truth. And the words were not bad. Nevertheless, it was, it was, it was punished. So they should, have the, they should have realized the same thing. That the, what they say might be true, but you got to know how to say it. How does that come? What does that come? Why is it that Miriam got involved in speaking about Meshach? Because I understand from her complaint 
רק ארבע מי שדיבר להשם, אז גם פה זה דיבר. אורלי, זאת מי שהשם ספוג, זה ספוג תעשו אוסו. ויסנדיג, אז בוא נדיבר, שמירי מנהל, knowing she knows that the Ibishter spoke to her and spoke to Aaron, but if I didn't upgrade that the Hechakai formation, the Gabazay, is a great grace, she didn't imagine that the greatness of Mesha is so much bigger than theirs, this to Metzai is an Isha, a Kushi Shino Bakel, to make a woman who is a Tzadikis. Rashi says, she says, Isha Kushi is black, means that just like black is clearly black, she was clearly a Tzadikis, she was beautiful in everything. So is that, as great as Mesha was, is that enough to free him from allowing her to have Tzad, the special woman, and that freedom from fulfilling the Ebishter's mitzvah of giving a wife her time, these lifrish menisha and that brought to separating from the wife. That's why she spoke. In other words, she meant, so to speak, well. And it's only because she didn't realize that Mesha's greatness is so great, yes. It's greater than all that. That was, so, what her time was. So we see what, the reason why she did this. Because the question was, why Taka did she speak? Because she felt that she didn't think Mesha was right. same way. This is what they thought. Mesha Rabbeinu, based on Hashem, telling him that it's up to him to choose, chose us. It's in their shlichas, so this shlichas that we were chosen, based on Hashem's words, obviously we're the best. We are the best mevinim in this mission. Nobody could be greater than our understanding because we were the one chosen to, to this mission. And since they, as shluchim of the Ebeshte, felt in their own eyes, felt very low. It says we looked like, like, like grasshoppers in front of the earth. That's how it was. So they felt for sure. So this is, what they feel is really what Hashem wants. Because they were chosen through Hashem telling Mesha the truth. And Bemele, not only it's, it's negated like by everybody, but they, their opinion counts more than anybody else because they were chosen as Shluchim. So they took out a decision and they felt that they could say it in the name of all the Eden because they were the representatives that are better than all the Eden. They came to that decision. Since in their mind they couldn't understand how you could go back to Israel. That's what they felt we have to bring this out. So the question was, why did they take a speak like that? Because they felt they have the right to do that. And not only they have an obligation maybe to do that, which is more similar to Miriam. Miriam also felt she spoke about because she felt that Mesha was wrong. And she spoke to us also. The Maragam also felt. That even though Mesha said, but we have to give our opinion very strongly because this is what really they thought Hashem was. This will also explain what Asha adds that Miriam spoke against the brother. And we asked in the beginning, the Rebbe asked, what's the who she spoke against? The main thing is she, she spoke Lashon Hara, got punished, and the Maragum should have taken a lesson, and they didn't. So why does Rashi Taki bring she spoke to the brother? This explains more the pshat that the Miraglim did not take a lesson from Miriam in the meaning of no pshat not sweet in hecha fazich. In this in the similarity Miriam and them is Miriam didn't evaluate Meishe Rabbeinu's greatness, thought they were just as great or at least in the same level, and same thing with the Miraglim. The Miraglim thought they were the greatest. So by writing that they didn't, that, that she spoke against her brother, shows something more beer in the idea that they didn't take a lesson from Miriam in how to evaluate somebody else and how great that somebody else is greater than you. By Miriam is given a prat in demchet for Zibir Bachel. By Miriam, a part of the Aveda was that she spoke on me, she spoke on her brother. But the question, the point here is the brother. Why? What's the brother? What's the brother? the brother? The brother is like half of your flesh. You're like really one. And in the Teva, it's schwer to say that an eigen and brother as there is chotzip sorry. It's hard to admit about a brother who is really like you. He's half of your flesh. And to zam and admit vein are echach and still he should be completely beyond you. So we can't blame her really for thinking that Moshe is not that great because she couldn't imagine. I'm a sister, so I'm also great. So how how much greater can it be? So you could justify basically her mistake. 
Her mistake was she didn't realize how great Meshav was, but I could justify this. And nevertheless, she was punished for what she's saying. Allah has come of a kama, the Meraglim of Nikitot Patrach Misadim is a certain Meraglim should not think more than that. As Allah Eden, Kailo Meshav Adam, who the Muslims, they knock in, knock their Achote. So certainly they shouldn't have thought, assumed that Meshav and Adam all the Eden have to follow what they think because they're the greatest. There are people greater than you. The mother, she that her speaking against Meshav, not realizing this is great, it makes sense. And nevertheless, she was punished. The Meraglim should have said, in that case, there's nothing we can, we, they certainly should have. Taken the lesson. So now we understand this Rasha. No Hadik is doing the Pirish Rasha. It's another Dik in Rasha. Rasha says, Rishoy Malolo, Rove Leilok Homose. These Rishoyim saw and they didn't take the lesson. The Hura is the word Rove Ibrik. The word they saw is extra. So Kadav Shtay, Rishoy Malolo Leilok Homose. Taylor puts the story of the Marag next to Miriam because the Rishoyim, uh, after the story of Miriam, and these Rishoyim did not take a lesson. What's the thing? They saw and they didn't take a lesson. What the word they saw? This will be understood by another question in the general story of the Maraglim. What's in this Hadish given by the Maraglim of Zeb as Zuchner? So, what new ideas came to the Maraglim when they came to, to see Eretz Yisrael? And if I say feel, I don't say the Shrokim be Satanil in Nuchalala, so much so that they got pushed scared when they came there and they said, We can't go. What, what, what new thing did they see? The Allah Zachm was the Mdurd Gizen. All the things they saw, Ki Aswam Ayeshavar, the people are strong, etc., etc. They knew that from before. Every Eden knew, all the Eden knew how strong they are. How do we know they knew? For um, number one, first of all, the Rebbe says, Mot Nochim Etzayim Givus, what is their Matzev, what is Kumtu and Eretz Knan. People knew from one part of the world to the other, not like that, obviously, but they still knew. So people in the time didn't know how strong the people of Knan are. The Rabban says this also. For sure they knew, number one. Number two, Bishira Sayoma Mali Eden Gizok to make up the Ishwaknan. In the Shira, as Yashir, all the Eden said that the miracle Hashem did by Kriyas Yamsuv made all the people of Knan melt, getting scared. So Mgivus they can call Yeshva Knan. So obviously they knew that the people in Knan are strong. Unzeya Shtaka Zeya is strong. Anders should doch cannot flow and it doesn't make it. When they said people in Knan got scared, if they're not strong, what's the big deal? Why did they get scared? But the Chiddush was that even though they're so strong, they got scared. So obviously they knew already by the Chiddush Yamsu that they were strong. But eight other places, would they, so definitely they knew. And for that reason, they gave them great to gain connect to Israel. And as long as they heard all these things, they were ready to go. So what happened all of a sudden that they saw it? They knew that before. What changed their mind? What got them scared? Is there beer in them? Yes, the answer is very simple. The Gemara says that hearing is not like seeing. Seeing is different. As long as they only heard how strong the people in Eknan is, they didn't care about the hardships. I think great king can to sell, they were ready to go. Charles, I'm gazan with the egg and egg when they saw with their own eyes, the as they're strong, but as they give it, they saw them well, Harot of the Ephesian can have them. That had an effect that now they changed their mind. When they heard about it, it's one thing, but when they saw it, they changed their mind. But the param the miracle matish when came upon him roino. You see, when they said things, we saw the giants. They constantly said, "We saw." As was it the sale? No, they alain gezen. No, they yarem as far priores. They said, "We saw it ourselves." They came to show them the fruit, and they wanted to show. Look how the fruit is not normal. So the people are dig not normal. So they wanted to show them because they saw it. when you see things, it has a complete different effect. The far the flash mat gezen as they show him halolu ro. That's what Asher says. The question was, why is negate they saw? Because this is the answer. This is what Asher is trying to say. He's showing saw. Eich de Musaro. The lesson not to care, they also saw. The Balda, the Amaling, the Zebos, the Pasit, the Miriam, and Rasha said, they saw what happened to Miriam. But as they get out, gave them themselves to take it, a bite to come, and then they saw him for in and Neres Knan. They should have gave him the strength to overcome the fact what they saw in Neres Knan. Because they saw the opposite. They saw how terrible Oshon is. They saw it. So this, even though here they saw it, they should know that this strength could over this thing, this seeing should overcome the other seeing. Even if all the praise get heads back, name Shmiram had they just heard about the punishment of Miriam Volt from Azaniti Kent Mon if I was like Khamuzer. It's hard to claim why didn't you take a lesson? Well, the Sibir was what he brought some chat to give Emberia, because then the expect the answer the, the justification would be the reason why they did that chat, why they said about that at this role is because they saw it. And the care that we got not to do the Aveira, we just heard. So then they could have some kind of excuses. Rasha Madgish Rose, Rasha they saw. 
Eerst in de zin is kerk of niet zin, die kan ik even bereiden. Dus kerk die gaat naar de zin, ook zo die zo. En na van de kerk, die ook gewoon moesten, en stil die niet tegen de So now, if you look back, you see all the questions are answered, and the whole Rashi is understood. When the Nyonim of Loim and Allah Hilik, Allah Hashim, Tayri, them, Tayri, Shrashi, Hududu, the Kofonim, Rebbe says, in Rashi, you have Yenna Shal Tayri, which is considered, but you also have what the Shalok calls the Nyonim of Loim, which means even in Allah, in Nikola Poshin, you have in Rashi, which is Chutash Mikro, Rashi also has in Yonim and Nikola in Londis in it. So the Rebbe said, I could say an Indian in this Indian, which is in Londis, in Nikola. It's not like a simple pshat. Lechadudah means it's a sharp chap. First, ask a kasha. These data, fourth must be parshas midin to parshas maragim. After everything said and done, how does Taka Sofka solve the data? For whatever reason, we said the data makes parshas maragim close to parshas midin to show how terrible they were that they saw what happened in the same way. But after all, Sofka Sofka, Durch them, Kem Ver Nach Shadov Mirim, and Aziz, and Etfos Bedeim to the maragim by writing close. Still, there might be some suspicion that maybe she is like the Maragim. And so the the of a Yisab Nikim Hashem Yisrael. It says you have to be clean from the Ebrister for people. If people shouldn't make a mistake, I think they bad. So Luchur, after everything said and done, Sofko Sof, we have a problem here. Why did the Tater do that? Which could give somebody an idea like that. Luchur, what we can't tell, Kemen and Ferenc, and Luchur, you never said you could answer. Apishita, Srasha, Pirusha, or Tater, based on Rasha Shita. This whole next piece is not so clear, so I'm going to first say it by heart, and I'll put it into the words. Basha holds in his Peshir Shal Teireh, with the man Domer of Teireh Megillah Megillah Nisim. The Machleik is in Gemara, and the Ebesher said to the Eight, the Meishah Rabbein is this Parsha, that Parsha. Did Meishah write it down right away? Sam told him a certain thing, he wrote it down. A week later, come another, he wrote it down. Or, Chasum and Nisim, means that Ebesher told Meishah, at the end, at the end, the 40 years, Meisha took all the Pashas and that's when he wrote them down. Rashi in Chumash learns Megillah Megillah Nisma. Meisha had gleich pashrim the Pashas. Every Pashas he was told, he wrote it right away. So if he said Mistabit, so it makes sense. And they're only from Pashas Shlach. So the beginning of Pashas Shlach, Aos was his four in the Mzelden Tog, they, they were told, to, he left on Chav Tassim. So everything that he were told on that day, which is the beginning of Pashas Shlach, when they were sent, it was finished. Their mission was given to them, the shikan in the shaykh's formation is the, in the shlich. So the sending them, they were sent already. So now you're not sending them anymore. Now they're going. And any connection to Mesha is over here. So as soon as that was over, and since we, Rasha learned Megillah, Megillah, Nikhta, everything was written, but Mesha Rabbeinu was his given Azoris, Mesha Rabbeinu, which did everything very fast, very right away. Gleich Fashim, he wrote it down right away. Could they need to uphold them and Sukum and Fanocha, Parash and Perish Mitzvah. Every time I was written down, there's another parashim teresh v'ksav. And if everything was written right away, you mentioned it didn't wait a day, a week, or something. As soon as it was finished, so we understand that the parasha was written as right away. On Chof Tassim, the parasha was written. Now, I want to say by heart what, what the Rebbe is trying to say here. In truth, the parasha of Miriam, Taka, happened the day before the parasha of the Maragim, the Mamash the day before. But, you know how many things happen? The Chav, we're talking about Millions of people. So even in a day, not many things happen. So after the story of Miriam, when she was finished with the seven days, till the Miraglin, a million things happened, even though it was a very short time. But a lot of things happened. For one of the things that happened is, at the end of Aleisha, right at the end of the story of Miriam, it says that that's when Eden traveled from Chatseris to Mitbar Poram. And the Maisa Miraglin was a Mitbar Poram. So they traveled. So really, the story of the Miraglin did not come so close to the story of Miriam. As much as it's close in time, there were so many things that happened in between. So Bamele, it's not such a real chance for people to think that she spoke Lashon Hara, Maragna spoke Lashon the same thing. Because really, even though the Parsha is written right next to it, but Be'emes, it didn't happen right after. It happened the next day, but with a million things in between. And therefore, the Kasha that was asked here, that Lechure, Sof Kosov, you could make a mistake and think that she's the same, the same level. So Lechure, you could answer that's not so. Because there are so many things in between, so it's not the same. Let's read it inside. Then I move in the portion that the other talk from me that's very clear, simple. Every day in the desert, that day, when the story of Miriam finished, and when the story of the Miragon happened, there were a lot of things that happened. We had 600,000 men, same amount of women and more. So many things happen to people. I mean, you have so many people. 
It says that they traveled at the end of Parshish Balaischa. It says, after the Anchofches, it says, Ba'achan Nosoam, they traveled. And then Sevayachna Bamidbar, and they rested. So travel, imagine millions of people traveling. Peter Rakhomas a Mishkan. Every time they traveled, they had to take apart the Mishkan. And then when they stopped, they had to put up the Mishkan. All the things connected to the Mishkan. For the Meyeroyes is given a Ribe Godel, Fish, and Osef, Miriam, Bechofka, Sidon, Kedem, Siluka, Mishkan, and Mirashlachlacha. So obviously, between Miriam was already finished with the seven days, and putting up the Mishkan in the new place that he came, and it all happened within that day and a half, these two days. So you can imagine how many things happened from between Miriam and the people thinking about all kinds of other things. Till the Shlach Lacho, Noch and Ufstel did Golim, they had to put in the Mishkan, they had to put up the, the, the camps, they had to put up the Mishkan. Noch about Tikravena, like Hulcham and Chulurash, Chumash in, in Pashat Vorim says that the Matidin came to Meish Rabbein, they're complaining, we want to send Beraglim. All that took place. Tuizinter and Tuizinter passing, thousands upon thousands of happenings. Separated between Miriam's being finished with her thing, with her punishment, and sending out the Maraglim. Not only stamp things that happened, mitzvahs that happened. Because when they traveled, it was a mitzvah. It was a mitzvah to travel because David told them and David should rest. So many things happened. So the Mele really did not very close. The smichos is over given in Meshra Ben Shreiben from Pashas Maragon to Pashas Miriam. When he wrote it, he wrote it right after that. Unor der fun or you can't, or you can't get darv zayin leilokhumus, der lokhumuse. And it's only from the way it's written they should have taken the lesson. So Bemele the Rebbe says, let's minimize in the in the closeness. Bemele, you can't say that the person will make a mistake and think that they they're equal because there was a big separation. When Asha says that they saw and they didn't take Musa, is the way the Torah was written. So, on the far, but when far cooked the bed was mishtel the parsha rain and amok was meis amok and machshan. Therefore, we overlook the Torah, overlook the fact that it it was written in a place where it could give up a, a suspicion that maybe they're the same. Because it's a mavor and a farit the meraglim. The Torah put it. What does the Rashi say? Why did the Torah write it here? Because they should have learned the lesson. So the Taka should have learned the lesson. So the Torah didn't do such a terrible thing because all they did, they wrote it close to each other. And the Taka should have learned the lesson the way it's written, shows that they should have learned the lesson. But to say that it gives Taka a real possibility to think that they're equal when there was, in time, it was not much time in between, but that millions of things happened in between that the two things have no connection. So Lechura, the Rebbe says, you could answer like that. So he said the word Lechura. As Blaik the Beshver, but that's still not so clear. See, the Chaklala, the Eid name, Lord Machatev, Shoshis, Kachaveiro. Sof, Kosov, it says, in other words, there's a din. You can't say to a person, you do a small Aveda, so someone else should not have an Aveda. That's a call like that. So here also, we're doing something that, after all, is not the right thing. To put Miriam, the Maragam next to Miriam, is not such a good thing. For the benefit that showing how the Maragam should have learned. So the question is, can we do something like wrong for somebody in order to help somebody else not to do wrong. The cloud is that we can't do that. So here, we're, after all, we're still doing that. Bavorant Rashi, Mishailis, and Rashi answers this question. Rashi, by writing, they didn't take Musar. Rashi could have said, they saw what happened to Miriam, and they sinned. Rashi says, in other words, they didn't take Musar. What does it mean, doesn't take Musar? They didn't take a lesson not to sin. Rashi wants to tell us that. And that answers the Kasha how. Kedilukamad, like I explained, in this cloud, in this rule that that you're not allowed to make someone sin in order somebody else should gain not to sin, is Rasha Mafara. Rasha says it in Gemara like this: You're not allowed to sin a little bit, do some small thing which is wrong, in order that your friend should not be punished. That's what Rasha says. Is not moving. I don't understand. It's a strange lotion. Rashi should have said what it means is you can't sin in order somebody else. A small sin in order somebody else should not do a big sin. What's the gate of punishment here? You can't do it in order somebody else should not be punished with a big punishment. That's not the point. The point is someone else shouldn't sin. You might think you sin a little bit so someone else shouldn't do a big sin. Rashi doesn't say that. Rashi is like this. There is an opinion in Tesfus 
there. Adosfus ain't naming him is dafke when the maisa shall isek maisa. When do we say don't sin a little bit to save somebody else? It's only when the guy did the aveda already, and you'll save him from the punishment. But if we're talking about doing something that your friend should not come to do a sin, a worse sin, then is aimnim leichatel. Then the din is we turn that one shift in teisves. We do tell a person sin chet kal a light avera. The dates of arhitn chavera for now chet chomer to protect save your friend from a strict avera. And the far is Rasha Madgis. That's what Rasha says there. That we don't tell a person sin a small aveda, that your friend should not be chayiv an einish chomer, a punishment. A punishment is after you did aveda. So, Madrid is to stress that this was ain't aim in chulu, that this that we don't say a person sin a small aveda to protect or save someone else from a bigger, is nor when there is a when it was done already. And I feel from it and from him place the main you want to take away the punishment. The most of the water says you're not about the taking out bread from an oven. If you put it in already, if you leave it in, they'll be punished for. Cook baking. If you take it out, which is a small isur, whatever the isur is, it'll protect him. Protect him from, from a punishment. He did it already, but he won't be punished because you take it out before. So Rashi, the Rebbe says, learns like Taisvis that in the case where you're protecting him from a punishment, he did have it, but you want to, you can't sin a small avera to protect him from a terrible punishment. But if you want to do a small avera to protect somebody from a big avera from being done, that you're allowed to. This explains. They have to try the Hakka the Tayra, write something which makes a possibility, something wrong to be to suspect Miriam that she's bad as the bad as the Maraglim. And we said, even though it's trying to tell you that it gave a Musaf to the uh, should have learned for the for the for the Maraglim, but you can't have one person something wrong with what for one person to save somebody else. But now we know why. While for Parshas Miriam, the miracle get up top, let him for hitting sich as a milchatil in it. What that should have happened is we're telling that they should have learned from not to sin. You're allowed to put somebody in a position of a small head to protect somebody from sinning, and that's what it was supposed to be. And those is Rasha Maram is with the vertebrate Lok Humusa. Question was why did Rasha say they saw and they didn't take a lesson? It should have said they saw and they sinned. No, to tell you that we're talking about before they sinned, they didn't take a lesson not to sin. Well, the tachlis for all as Musa is kedeis as I'm shmatim. And Rashi says the other place in Dvarim that they saw Musa and they didn't keep it. That's what it means. They didn't keep it means what should have happened. They sh- what we're trying to do with Miriam that they should have not sinned. They should have taken the lesson. So far, he did not mention as only tkumet zachet when he bring into an hogad yeshora that you're allowed to do this if you're going to protect a person from doing an avera and making him behave properly. Go in the right derech, the right an So that's what Rashi says here. So that's what Asher writes for the log chumus and not the lotion and the chote. But based on all this, we have a proper understanding in the whole Rasha, the Dibra Maschel, and all the words. Always like this, when you chazer over a second time, everything becomes clear. This is like a puzzle, everything falls into place. Like all the sikhs of the Rebbe. Okay. Okay, good night to everyone. Thank you, Rabbi Shapiro. Be well.